Colleagues, welcome back to the office and welcome to our presentation for today. This is Mastering Adobe Acrobat for Financial Professionals, Part 1. My name is Steve Yas. I'll be your instructor and presenter for today as we take a look at arguably the best tool for creating, generating, editing, and managing PDF files, portable document format files. Now, this is going to be the first episode of a three-parter that we're going to do that explores the different use cases of Adobe Acrobat specifically. Uh, and in this class, what we're really going to try to do is understand what PDFs are, how they function, different ways of generating them, and how you can use them inside of your business. Now, Adobe Acrobat has been around for a very long time. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think it's the origination of the tools for managing PDFs. And it is a tool provided by Adobe. Um, Adobe, an American software company here, uh, has long been, let's say, the main driving force behind that PDF format. Um, PDF itself, as we'll get into here shortly, is a ISO format, uh, International Standards Organization format, a standard international format for managing, for all intents and purposes, digital paper. And it has remarkable use cases and application inside a business, from contracts and agreements that can be digitally signed and disseminated to, frankly, completing your tax return in really just about everything in between. In today's world, you know, I use PDFs for just about everything. Um, you know, I've got a printer behind the screen over here uh, that contains, uh, you know, you know, uh, it's a laser jet printer. It's really nice. But uh, I, I would say for every one thing I physically print, uh, I'm generating probably, I don't know, 20 things in, in PDF at that same point. You know, and it's this default format that we use to save bank statements or agreements or really anything onto our computers and more. Now, in our first episode today, really, I want to lay the land, give you the lay of the land as it relates to how PDFs are used and how they're generated. Uh, today, we're going to talk about kind of uh, the broad strokes as it relates to leveraging PDFs in your organization, what they are, how they're used, when you can use them, some advantages and limitations of that particular format. Uh, and then more more specifically, we're going to dive into Adobe Acrobat, uh, which is that tool for creating them, managing them, editing them, uh, securing them, and more. And really, that's going to be the focus of the class itself is how we use Adobe Acrobat. Now, Adobe Acrobat comes in three flavors. There's Reader, there's Standard, there's Pro. Uh, the Reader being a free tool to consume PDFs. So if you are, for example, a, um, you know, somebody who is just a, uh, just a, uh, uh, needing to get information about PDFs. Well, that's the tool, you know, if you were to read a document and, and you don't need the ability to edit them or, or, um, manage them, that's the free tool you use. We're not really going to be focusing much on that aspect because that's really just basic level functionality. This class is intended for people who are need to generate and need to do it efficiently and effectively. And so we're going to focus on the standard in the professional version, the paid versions of that application. Although we'll certainly touch upon things that are applicable in reader two. And I'll point those out in our second and third episode, we're going to get into creating them, editing them and managing them. Um, and in today's episode though, we're just going to take a look at the tool, understand how this tool is being used and kind of all the circumstances around, uh, Acrobat that you should know to uh, be able to use this tool effectively. All right, before we get going here, just a couple of uh, announcements and then we'll go ahead and dive into our class. Just as a reminder, if you are watching or listening to our program today on YouTube or Facebook, or maybe you're listening after the fact on Apple uh, Podcasts or Spotify, first and foremost, thank you for finding us. We really appreciate you coming. It's uh, much obliged. Uh, as a reminder, you can earn CPE credits for watching or listening to our presentation for today. Now, all you have to do is head on over to cpetoday.com, find today's course. Our course code is MAA1. Uh, you'll complete a short five question quiz about what we discussed and presented, and then you will get your credit for today's presentation. And uh, we produce our podcast twice a week live, uh, as live as we often can. Uh, which is most weeks, Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific. You can actually attend live and, and uh, attend it as a webinar and get credits that way. Uh, you can ask questions. It's interactive. It's a lot of fun. And for those of you who are watching live today, thanks for coming to our live presentation. And if you can't make it, as a reminder, again, we push this up um, every episode to Spotify, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and you can find it wherever you happen to find your content and more. 
And uh, our podcast covers all ranges of accounting and technology topics from security to Excel uh, to uh, uh, Power BI to fraud and more. So please consider checking us out. And if you'd like, you can make today's presentation uh, credit 100% free by using coupon code one free podcast at checkout. Uh, you can take today's class and get a free credit for watching or listening. No obligation. Just use one free podcast at checkout. All right, folks, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it and get started with our presentation for today. All righty. So what is Adobe Acrobat and what are PDFs? PDF, again, standing for Portable Document Format. Now, we've got two pieces of this, and let's try to understand these pieces separately, and then we'll, we'll talk about how they're used together. Um, a PDF is a portable document format, and the best way you could probably think about it is that it is a digital representation of something that is physical. You know, so you got a physical piece of paper here. The PDF is how we would store that physical paper in an electronic format. And that's what it was intended to be able to do. Now, in the time that it has been created, it has been extended a number of cap and in a number of ways to not only include things uh, such as the written word, but images, even video and audio and embedded other applications can be included in a PDF format as well. Um, but in its most clear sense, PDF is intended to be something that has a high degree of fidelity to a physical printed document, meaning you can take something, store it in that PDF document, and then be able to reproduce it on an inkjet printer, a laser printer, or some other type of printer, uh, and it will have a lot of fidelity between that physical piece and that digital file. Okay. Now, it was originally created by Adobe in 1992. Uh, it has its roots back to a 1991 project called the Camelot Project. And their intentions were, again, to create that digital piece of paper. And they had some really altruistic and big thoughts with respect to creating this file format that, frankly, in today's environment, you know, is pretty nice um, compared to, you know, uh, where we'll see with a lot of uh, documents where they're very proprietary and tied to a single application or an operating system. The Founders behind PDF, again, with some big pictures and very altruistic thoughts here, really wanted to create something that was uh, independent of a specific application, specific set of hardware or an operating system. Now, at the time in the 90s, everything was tied to, you know, whatever operating system you're on. And, you know, even back then it was still really Windows and Mac, but you had a lot of incompatibility between those two operating systems and something that was created on a uh, Windows machine wouldn't necessarily open on a Mac. They didn't want to recreate that issue. They wanted to create something that was universal. And, you know, fast forward to today, that's exactly what you have. A PDF can be open on virtually any type of application, any type of computer, any type of device. And that's why your bank, for example, sends its bank statements out in PDF format because, you know, more people are using a mobile phone than ever before or a tablet or on a computer, and it doesn't matter what that user's device is, they'd be able to open it up and use that and consume the information stored in that PDF file. Now, PDF is a basis in what's called the PostScript language. Now, PostScript is a, a language that printers actually use for printing and creating documents. And so it's an application of how that PostScript language is used, but in a file. Uh, and it was eventually codified by the International Standards Organization, or ISO, in 2008 as the world's standard as it relates to digital files. And it's ISO 32000 is that standard. And PDF is the third most popular file format out there on the web after the actual HTML files itself. It's more popular than image files, which is incredible. Uh, so your images, JPEGs, like your camera shoots or PNG, uh, portable network graphic or GIF or GIF, depending on where you are, how you pronounce that word. Uh, it actually is the most or the third most popular uh, file format. So it's used everywhere. And, and I, I would say it's very, very ubiquitous. And so for your organization, you should have absolutely zero hesitations about using this as a way of archiving digital paper, digital documents inside your organizations. Uh, if anything, it'll have even more adoption next year than it does this year. And so it's, it's an absolute safe, secure, and standard way 
of being able to contain really kind of any information you might need. Now, if we look at the popularity of these PDFs over time here, uh, and this is just going back about 10 years, uh, we could see over time, you know, if anything, the amount of PDFs has actually increased. Uh, and this is a looking at the index of Google and how many files uh, that Google has indexed of different file formats. Now we're not looking here at HTML files uh, or images files. We're actually looking at other, other uh, types of document storage formats, including docs, which is Microsoft words format, Excel files, which is XLSX PowerPoint, PPTX and EPUB. EPUB is probably the closest. Uh, I wouldn't even say competitor because EPUB and PDF to very different things from each other, but EPUB is a electronic publication. We see this format a lot with books actually. And I'm going to, they're, again, they're different, but, uh, uh, almost everything that an EPUB does can be done inside of a PDF, but it's got some hints, let's call them hints inside of it that make it a little bit more applicable for readers like a, like a Kindle or a, a iPad, uh, iBooks type deployment for reading. But if we look at across these different file formats, just, you can see here how many there actually are, uh, compared to everything else, you know, at best, we're looking at about 10% of those other file formats, uh, compared to PDF, which is just, again, just gigantic at, uh, even at the lowest end, which I'm not sure what happened here in 2014, uh, we could see here that it is well over 70% in pretty much every year. Now, when do you want to use a PDF and what is the a proper use case for it? Again, you should think of a PDF as being digital paper. Okay. Uh, anything that you would want to store electronically and then be able to print in the future, easily email in the future. Uh, it could be a form that you might want to fill out or e-signature or something like that. Just anything that you would do in, in physical print, you can do inside of a PDF. And so that's the best case that you could think about it. Okay. And it's great because you don't have to physically send something. You could send it electronically and preferably through a client portal. Okay. Now, PDF puts a huge emphasis on the standardizations and interoperability. Almost any PDF type of document can be created and read on any devices. Um, there's no real limitations as it relates to um, consumption of the PDFs, but I will point out that like um, the Adobe Acrobat program isn't on every single platform. It's not on Linux as an example. There might be the reader application on Linux, but uh, it's a Windows and Mac application. But from the Adobe Acrobat app, if you have created the, um, the PDF on there, that output of that Acrobat uh, file, well, that, that's universal. Linux, Unix, uh, Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, all good, okay? Now, interestingly, there's not actually uh, a limitation, both in terms of how big in the number of pages a PDF could potentially have. Uh, you're really just limited on the processing power of the device that is opening that uh, file. Uh, I will tell you, I, this is a question that you usually get asked, well, how big can it be? Can it be a hundred megabytes? Can it be a thousand gigabytes? Uh, it could be even bigger than that. And the answer is there's no actual hard limit here. You can make them as big as you need them to be. Uh, in practice though, it's going to really depend on the processing power of the computer. Uh, you can actually have something that's actually not a um, large number of pages, but it have, if it has a crazy amount of artwork in it, let's say you're using Adobe Acrobat to create proofs for brochures, uh, proofs for flyers or pamphlets um, that has a lot of, you know, complex artwork in it. Those documents can be very, big in terms of file size and also very slow to load. And it's not a factor of the file. It's a factor of like what's in that file and the artwork inside of that file. If it has contains a lot of uh, high resolution pictures, a lot of layers, well, that's where you're going to start to see that that uh, file does not really work that effectively. Now, one of the cool things with respect to Acrobat, uh, this is a feature that's not widely used, but you actually have the ability to easily split up really big documents if you need to. So let's say, for example, you had a document that was, you know, 10,000 pages and you wanted to separate it into 10 documents of a thousand pages a piece. Well, Acrobat can, can do that automatically for you. Likewise, if you had a big document that was a hundred megabytes and you wanted to split it up into five 20 megabyte files, you can also do that. And I'll show you that in a future episode of how you can split these different files apart from each other. Okay. But in terms of hard limitations on how big or how many number of pages you can have, not a problem at all. 
Now, PDFs have a number of advantages that we should be familiar with, okay? First one is graphic integrity, okay? You've heard me use the term fidelity. These documents have a lot of integrity and a lot of fidelity. They attempt to digitize that digital and create a digital piece of paper. Uh, it will display the same content in the same layout, no matter what operating system device or software applications use. So if I open up a, and let's use a tax form, a 1040, an 1120, um, whatever, you know, the IRS uses this format because they want the 1040 or the 1120 to be identical regardless of the user's device. It should look the same. It shouldn't, for example, have things off kilter or not line up. It should look identical. And that is, I would say, probably the overarching priority of that PDF file format. It'll look the same today as it did a year from now, 10 years from now. You can open up a PDF that was generated in 95 and it will have all that backwards compatibility to look the same today as it did back then. And so it has that foreverness that you can get associated with the file. Um, that's not the same with respect to, let's say, a Word file or an Excel file. Well, let's focus on Word. Uh, Word is more of a markup language. Uh, Word is actually a collection of XML, extendable markup language files. And if you, for example, created a Word file with some obscure font and you send it to your friend and they open that file up, it's not going to look the same for them because they won't have that same obscure font. You'd actually have to send the font with them. With the PDF though, it'll look identical, you know, because PDFs render the actual text on the page to a specific look and that look is maintained. So that integrity piece of this, if it's important for your stuff never to look different, which is why we use it for artwork. It's why we use it for flyers and forms. This is a big reason. You don't have to worry about fonts. You don't have to worry about plugins. It'll all look the same. PDFs are multidimensional, okay? You can build in layers inside of your uh, files and you can actually layer things on top of each other. So there could be something in front of something else as an example, okay? It also allows you to be able to integrate other types of content. It's not just uh, written word, okay? It can include at the very minimum text and images, vector graphics, now, some people will even embed things like videos, animation, audio files, 3D files, and more. Uh, in practice, I've never really ever used this feature, and I don't know many professionals that would. I've got to assume if you worked at a creative studio, though, maybe this would be a great way um, to be able to transmit these types of uh, formats. In today's environment, though, probably a YouTube or some other video streaming service would be better to stream uh, for example, the videos rather than embed them, but you do have that option. And remember, PDFs are an offline file format. You know, one of the things you can do if you needed to transmit a video or an animation, when you send somebody that PDF, everything's inside of that PDF in almost all circumstances. Yes, you can link out to third-party content, but if you embedded a video or an animation or an audio file, or even an Excel workbook, you can embed an Excel workbook into a PDF. It's going to be there as well. And everything is transmitted in that file. So if that user's on a plane and they open it up, they'd still be able to consume it. Now, PDFs also can contain other interactive things like form fields. You can create forms inside of your PDFs for something as simple as signing your kid up for ASO soccer, or T-ball, or Girl Scouts. Uh, and they could also contain calculations where if it's, uh, for example, an expense report and you fill in uh, your date and the different level of expenses, it can total down to the bottom for you. Uh, it can contain things like hyperlinks. You click on something, an image, you click on a, a word, it can take you and open your browser up and take you where you're supposed to go. It can contain buttons as well, you know, so you could have a clear form button, submit form button. Uh, and certainly things that are more advanced in today's environment, like e-signature and having the ability to be able to prove that a document was in fact uh, reviewed and signed by somebody can all be contained inside of that PDF. These elements and more can all be contained in the same, that same file. They can be organized, they can be presented and, uh, even contained inside of what we call a portfolio, which is a PDF of PDFs. Now, PDFs are super convenient. Um, so many applications from Google Chrome to QuickBooks give you the ability to be able to kick out a PDF right away. Okay. Basically spit that file out. You could save it. You're locked and loaded. You're good to go. And so creating them, editing them, 
everybody knows, I shouldn't say everybody, but 99% of us, and I would say virtually all professionals have used a PDF at some point. Now, PDFs can also be secured. Okay. You could set up a PDF with different levels of access to protect the content, uh, as well as restricting certain abilities. And we'll talk about that in our third episode. And what I mean by this is that a document can be encrypted. So if it's something with proprietary information, you know, you could apply a long and strong password to it. And that document can be password protected, preventing a reader who does not know the password from being able to open that file up. Um, which is a good option if it contains sensitive information to your organization, maybe payroll data, maybe username and passwords. Now, when we get to our security section, I'll explain this, explore this a little bit further with you. It's not foolproof. Um, you know, modern PDF documents use AES 256 bit encryption. Um, you use that in conjunction with a long and strong password. You're pretty good where people get a little screwed up on the security side of this is they don't use that strong password. And, uh, you know, though they use a very simple password as an example, which then causes that document to be compromised. But if you use a long and strong password, you'll be reasonably protected. Now you can also restrict access to these documents for certain abilities. Like for example, the ability to edit, modify, extract, or even print. Um, those aren't hundred percent foolproof. There are ways around those particular limitations, like doing a screenshot as an example, uh, but for the most part, they they offer a pretty good degree of security and fidelity uh, to that document. They can be compact. Uh, again, theoretically, they can contain an unlimited amount of information, but they can also be compressed. There's compression algorithms built into that PDF. Uh, specifically, I'll show you uh, an option here called save as reduced file size, which will is uh, Acrobat's built-in ability to be able to remove unnecessary um, data to make a smaller file size. And the big limitation, I will tell you more than anything else with respect to your PDF documents that'll cause them to be big is images. Images 100% of the time are always the thing that will make a file unnecessarily large. So be careful with that. And again, they can be viewed and created in virtually all applications. Now, as great as PDFs are, there are some limitations that we should know about them. Okay. So First and foremost, and this is not necessarily a limitation, it's more of an acknowledgement. It's a, it's a, a sword that cuts both ways. They are a timeless document. So what does that mean? It means they're not real time. You know, they're great. Like a balance sheet is a snapshot of a business on a point in time. Same thing with a PDF. If you kicked out a PDF document, it's not going to be updated. It's a timeless format. So we kick it out, we save it as a PDF. And if we did it at 1123 on August 5th, and we open it up 50 years from now, it's going to be the same data as it was on August 5th, 11:23 AM. Okay. If you need real time updates, PDF documents are not for you. Okay. They will never provide that functionality. Okay. They could be gigantic, especially when they have a lot of graphics. Uh, so if it's a big PowerPoint presentation, you need to spend a little bit of time getting your document, let's say optimized before creating that PDF. Uh, because if it, that presentation contains a bunch of really high resolution graphics, you're going to create a PDF that might be 50, 60, a hundred megabytes or more. And that could make it so that it is not easily something that you can email to somebody else. And okay. They can have security issues. Um, I will tell you one of the best things that you can do if you're choosing to use Adobe Acrobat is to make sure it's up to date. Uh, there are so many uh, examples that you can point to of people having, uh, security issues inside their organizations by using out of date Acrobat inside their company. And, um, somebody receives a PDF. They think it's from their client. They think it's from a vendor. They open up that PDF and because PDFs are multi-layered, they can contain more than just text and images. They can actually contain other embedded applications. Well, because they're using an, a, a older version of Acrobat that doesn't have the latest security updates. Well, they open this document that contains malicious code. And because usually they're running older versions of windows, they infect their systems with malware. Now, to be clear, this is not just an issue with respect to Adobe Acrobat. It's any PDF application. Make sure you're running the latest version with the latest security improvements. Okay. Okay. They're difficult to edit. And that's also part of the fact that they're a timeless document. Okay. PDF is not an authorship tool. Okay. You don't originate data inside of PDF. You can. Okay. And I'll show you some things that you can do to edit and modify your PDFs 
but just realize it's not an authorship tool. It's an output tool. So what do I mean by this? If you're writing a contract, you don't write that contract or that agreement inside of Acrobat. You write it inside of Microsoft Word, and then you output that file into a PDF and send it to someone to review and sign. But you don't write that contract or agreement in Acrobat directly. It's not fun. Trust me on this. I'll show you some editing capabilities that you can do, but it's not perfect and it's not designed to be perfect. Okay. Um, if you needed, like if somebody came back to you and said, you know, Hey, I need a whole bunch of modifications and changes. You'd always go back to the original file that you used to create it, whether it be a spreadsheet, whether it be an, a, a tool like Microsoft word or something else to make those edits and then ultimately output the completed file. Okay. Likewise, it can also be difficult to extract export information from that PDF. Anybody who's ever received a spreadsheet, uh, like a Microsoft Excel file that's been saved in PDF and wanted to bring it back into Excel, you probably end up with the mess on your hands. Okay. If you needed to get the original data, it's always best to go back to that raw data format, whether it be an Excel file, whether it be a Word file or something different. Uh, PDFs do contain now in the modern versions of Acrobat the ability to export data out to a Word file or to an Excel spreadsheet. And I'll show you how to do that here in our next episode. Um, but it's best effort and your, your success will vary. Sometimes it works flawlessly and that is usually for simple documents, but if it's a document with a high degree of complexity, a lot of graphics, a lot of layers, it's not going to work well. Okay. And I would say that, uh, it also will be limited it, depending on the version of Acrobat you're using and what version of PDF you're using. You know, it's come a long way since its origins in the early nineties. And what we can do in 2022 with a PDF is a lot more than what we could do in 1998, uh, 2006. So if you can try to stay up to date, cause there are new features and functions added all the time. Well, folks, let's go ahead and have our first review question. And you can just think along to yourself and pick the correct answer in your head. Which of the following is an advantage of using PDFs? Okay. Is it graphic integrity? Is it a timeless document? Is it easy to extract or export data from? Well, in the context of this question, I would say the correct answer here is that graphic integrity, which is that highest intended use of the PDF is to have that fidelity to what the output is now and forever. Uh, I could argue though, that the timeless document could also be an advantage to, if that's what you're going for. But in the context of this presentation, we said that that's not an advantage if you wanted real time updates. So that may or may not be correct for you. Uh, and it's certainly not necessarily easy to extract or export data from, uh, because, uh, if it's a complex file, you probably won't be able to get that data out. So the most correct answer here would be the graphic integrity. Now, up to this point, we have discussed. Up to this point, we have discussed really kind of everything related to PDFs. And this course is about Adobe Acrobat. Now, Adobe uh, really kind of, let's say, made PDF itself um, its own kind of thing um, in the 90s when they kind of just say, basically said, like, it's, it's uh, independent and it doesn't require a specific application or operating system uh, to be able to be used. Uh, and when it became an ISO format, it became it became something that be was more than just, um, one, one company's product, one company's application. And so you're not required to utilize Acrobat to use PDFs, but it's kind of the de facto standard with respect to, uh, management, creating and editing of these files itself. Okay. Uh, you can use other tools. And in fact, in our fourth episode, I'll give you a couple of different alternatives you can choose. PDFs will work as well inside of Acrobat as they do in Chrome, as they do in Edge and others. You're not required to use this, but I got to say when it comes to business use of PDFs, especially around creating, editing, and managing them, Acrobat is that gold standard. Okay. So almost at the same time when PDF was created, Acrobat was created at that same point by Adobe. And it's actually a collection of a couple of different products. You've got Acrobat, you've got uh, exchange and you've got distiller and 
in the modern era here, it's really kind of grown into a collection of tools, again, creating, managing, and editing these particular documents. Now, as I mentioned, the Adobe Acrobat Reader itself is a free tool. Anybody can download it. It's available for iOS, Android, Mac, PC. I'm not 100% sure on uh, Linux, but I can tell you, even if it's not, uh, there are still lots of other tools that are Linux compliant that will work for you. But the Adobe Acrobat DC application, and at the time of the recording, that's the, the standard now, um, that's available on both Mac and PC. Now, Acrobat, the standard and the professional, that's what I'm going to tell you you're probably going to need to get if you are looking to use this in a business to create and manage them. And in today's environment, like most applications, it is primarily offered in a subscription format uh, where you'll pay a reoccurring fee, either monthly or annually, uh, to get rights to use that applications. Now, Adobe also does offer it as a perpetual license one time. Uh, I'm going to argue that that's probably not what you want. Uh, the perpetual license on this, you pay it once, and I've got some pricing information here I'll show you in a minute, but it's going to not include really many of the features and functions that I think make the Acrobat program in today's environment really a killer application. Uh, the perpetual license, if you just buy it and you pay that one-time fee, it's not going to include uh, quarterly updates. It will include security updates, but it won't have feature enhancements. And it's also not going to include any of the premium cloud services like the Adobe Sign, which is one of the main reasons I subscribe to the product. Uh, the Adobe Sign, which is something that is offered as part of the subscription license for the Pro, version of the application gives you the ability to create unlimited e-signature documents. And I can create a form. I can send it out to someone that can complete that form. They can then digitally sign that form and return it back to me. And to me, that makes it worth it. Now there are other services like DocuSign, there's HelloSign and lots of other ones that I can think of. Um, those services range anywhere from 10 to $30 per month. Well, guess what? If we look at the pricing for Acrobat, I don't really get paying an additional fee when I can get those services built into one fee from Adobe. Okay. Now this is just a breakdown of the licensing choices that you can get uh, for the premium versions. Now, to be clear, you've got Adobe standard and you got Adobe pro Adobe pro is on, is the top end. It's the Ferrari. It's got every option um, and a number of enhancements and features that come along with it. Adobe standard is the, still premium version of the application, but it's missing certain features and functions that go along with it. Okay. I'm going to say for the audience that's probably listening at the moment, it's 50, 50. I think half of you would probably be very okay and, and standard and half of you probably have a good reason to upgrade to pro. Um, you, and as we kind of talk through this, you can make your own mind about what might work well for you. Okay. And then on the lower tier, if you look at the bottom here, I've got the perpetual license you can kind of see what it costs. And it's not cheap. I mean, the pro version is almost 500 bucks, you know, uh, versus 14.99 a month. Now Adobe does offer some, some, um, reduction in fees. If you choose to agree to a, uh, commitment. Okay. And, uh, if you choose to pay, uh, uh, monthly or annually, doesn't really matter. Uh, but if, if you want that uh, kind of reduced fee, you have to agree to at least a year of service. Now you can either do it uh, where you pay it every single month, or you can do it where you just pay it one lump sum. It's up to you. Okay. Personally, I, uh, I use a separate service called creative cloud. So, uh, you've got the Adobe Acrobat. You can just buy Adobe Acrobat, uh, and you'll have a nice life. It'll be great. Okay. But you also have this other option, which is called the creative cloud. Okay. Now this is a great option. If you are, uh, considering or using other Adobe products, Adobe is one of the largest software companies out there. They're gigantic. They make lots of software in the creative space. Um, you know, some of their big notable applications are going to be things like Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, uh, Photoshop being a graphic design for pixel art. Uh, Premiere is a, uh, a video editing service. Uh, you also have Premiere Rush. You've got, um, uh, got After Effects, which is a uh, fantastic tool for doing uh, animation and uh, other types of uh, 
special effects in your videos. Uh, there's also Illustrator, um, which is a vector art program. Well, Photoshop and Illustrator, I mean, are two very commonly used business applications and, and very expensive also in their own right. Uh, if you have any need for other stuff inside of the Adobe ecosystem beyond just the editing of PDFs, you should definitely check out their other program, which is called the Creative Cloud. And it includes a suite of uh, websites uh, that you can leverage inside of Chrome or Edge, uh, desktop application, mobile applications uh, to do all different types of stuff like management for photography. They've got this incredible tool called Lightroom for managing digital photos, uh, video editing, UX, UI design, drawing, painting, and more. And you can actually build your own plan with individual subscriptions. Um, and instead of licensing product by product, you just get them all at once. Now for me, this is what I get. I think I spent somewhere around $50 a month at the time of the recording. I've had it for many, many years. So I'm pretty sure I got a legacy plan here. It's about 600 bucks a year. Uh, somewhere around there. And it is well worth it for me uh, because I use these tools all the time. If you just need Acrobat though, you can just license Acrobat itself. Okay. So let's say you move forward with licensing Acrobat. It'll be what we call Acrobat DC. And DC I'll talk about here in more in a minute stands for document cloud, but let's understand some of the difference between the pro and the standard and why you might want to get one or the other. Okay. They don't have that many differences between them. Okay. Uh, there's some additional features that are going to be available in the pro version that are not going to be available in the standard version. Uh, but for most of you, the standard version will be totally fine. Now, both the pro and the standard can create documents. Uh, they both have a plugin for Microsoft office, which is nice. Uh, so you can, for example, export stuff from word, Excel, and PowerPoint in one click and create documents in PDF. I'll point out by the way, uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint natively with no Acrobat plugin can also generate PDFs using its own built-in features and functions. Uh, and I'll show you how to do both ways in a later episode here. Uh, but the plugin for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint for Office is quite nice and offers some additional improvements that the standard version in, in the Microsoft applications don't have. But you can do that and through the plugin in all of the Office applications. Uh, you can create and edit, reorder, rearrange, add pages, delete pages. Uh, you can create, fill and sign forms. You can combine multiple documents into a single PDF. Uh, you can secure and password protect your documents. Uh, you could send stuff out for e-signature and track responses in real time. The pro version though, is going to give you some mobile editing. There's some mobile apps that you can choose to use uh, for iOS and Android with the pro version. I'm not sure why they, they made this a distinguishing difference. I feel like this is something that both versions could use, but given the need to compare two versions of the same PDF, um, instead of kind of going page by page and looking at them simultaneously, this will scan the whole thing and pull out all the differences and tell you, um, you know, when one document is different than the other, that's really useful if you're doing things like contract review and you want to understand if there's any differences between a PDF, between the version you sent and the version that was, uh, that was received. Okay. Okay. You can also do things like, uh, searching between documents, uh, that's available between both, um, hundred percent. Uh, the pro version gives you the ability to be able to scan and edit documents into searchable PDFs. Uh, you can redact stuff. I'll show you that in episode four, some of the advanced things you can actually mark whole sections of a document not to be published. And, uh, you can go ahead and, uh, remove those documents pretty easily. Uh, remove those sections of those documents. And you can also force and validate ISO standards related to uh, these as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the DC side of this. What is the DC? Okay. So with respect to the DC, that again, stands for document cloud. Okay. The document cloud gives you the ability to be able to store PDF documents inside of Adobe's cloud storage. And every subscription includes a hundred gigabytes of cloud storage. Now, frankly, in today's environment, um, it just seems that everybody's giving you storage. I don't use a lot of the Adobe storage, but I do like the fact that I can, for example, store something in Adobe's storage and then pull down that same document on my mobile device and be able to edit it and work with it from there. Uh, and I've used this a lot for reviewing documents and creating forms where I can just save it in the Adobe cloud and then pull it up on my laptop or mobile device. 
but you get 100 gigs of storage you can use however you'd like. And you can save not only your PDFs, but you can save whatever you'd like in that as well. And the DC version also contains several enhanced Acrobat features and functions uh, that you can choose to use inside of that uh, tool. So you could do things like, for example, e-signature. You could do things such as uh, um, uh, digital collaboration. You could do things such as uh, uh, such as uh, uh, setting something out for review, and uh, you can almost use it like a quasi document portal and more. Okay. And so uh, I personally think it's well worth that additional cost if you plan to use the features. Uh, for me, I use it all the time. I create a document, send it out for sharing, and it makes it really easy to be able to control who has access to that. I use this as collaboration. I use it for forms. Uh, but really, I would say that e-signature is the thing I really, really, really like. Okay. Now, this DC section that's only available in that subscription service. Okay. The non subscription one is what they call the 2020. Okay. Um, and at some point I'm sure they'll update it. Maybe it comes this year and would end up being Adobe Acrobat 2022. But just as a comparison here, the DC version's bleeding edge. It's right up to the point. It's, it's right up, uh, where, um, the latest and greatest updates and features are. Okay. The pro version, well, that version, if you bought it in 2020, it's doing the same thing in, in August of 2022 as it did when it came out in 2020. And so uh, there are no feature enhancements and no cloud services attached to it. Now, both these can create and edit documents. Both of these can share documents. One's going to share them through the DC, through the dig, uh, document cloud. The other one's going to share them through email. But some of the additional DC things that you're going to get creating and tracking legally binding e-signatures, integration with Office 365, integration with the other Adobe Acrobat, or the other Adobe programs and more, uh, natively uh, pushing and pulling documents from your Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive account. It's not going to have those. But if you want to buy it, own it perpetually, you can use it for 10 years. That's your pro 2020 version. If you want these different things, you're never going to own DC. It's like a lease application. Uh, but you'll pay for it per month. Now, as I mentioned, you don't even have to pay for Acrobat to begin with. You can use the reader. Now, the reader tool doesn't really do any authorship, doesn't really do any editing or management. It's really just a tool to open up a PDF and be able to read information in there. It's right in the title. Uh, you don't need Adobe Reader to open a PDF document. Your Windows or Mac application will do it, uh, operating system will do it natively. You just open it up, read it, you're good to go, okay? So if you just need to, you know, mark up a PDF, add some comments to a PDF, sign something, you can use the Adobe Reader application. But uh, if you need to create, edit, extract documents, this tool will not do it for you. So it's basic functionality. You can highlight things, you can comment on things, and that's about it. Yes, you can digitally sign your documents, but no, you cannot create documents that need to be signed, okay? Um, and no, you will not be able to edit or otherwise modify PDFs with that reader tool. This is a useful tool just if you're a normal person, you know, like an executive, for example, and, and people send you stuff to review and sign, and that's about it, you know, then you use that Adobe Reader tool. So let's go ahead and have another review question. What is the purpose of the Adobe Acrobat Reader DC? Hmm. Okay. Uh, is it to offer a free tool to create and edit PDFs? No, it is not. Okay. It's not a tool that you would use to create or edit PDFs. It is just a tool to consume PDFs. Okay. So it, nor is it a tool that you can use to edit the correct answer here again is going to be a free tool to consume, to read, do basic types of modifications, which would be like commenting, highlighting, signing something, uh, but it is not a tool to create, nor is it a tool to edit. Alrighty. Now, another tool that you could choose to use, and this is going to come on your mobile device is going to be the Adobe scan to PDF. Okay. Um, so with this particular tool, this is kind of useful if you're out in the field and you need to take a scan of something that, uh, you want people, uh, to be able to digitize and to be able to store electronically. Okay. And with the scan, to, uh, the scan, 
what this is going to be able to let you do is it's going to let you be able to, um, it's going to let you be able to use your mobile device, your, your iOS, your Android device to be able to kind of go out and while you're in the field, snap a picture of it and turn it into that PDF document. Okay. Now you could just base, snap, basically snap a picture with your cell phone. It'll turn it into a PDF. It can do things like OCR automatic or sorry, optical character recognition automatically scanning and recognizing text on whatever you just scanned. It can do boundary detection to prevent things like backgrounds, like part of the desk, for example, becoming the PDF. Uh, it even utilizes Adobe's AI tools to correct for things like perspective, eliminating glare, shadow, and more. You can even password protect your file. And uh, it's a cool tool if you happen to be out in the field and you need to create a PDF for where you're going. Okay. Now, if you want to read PDFs while you're on the go, you should check out the Adobe Acrobat mobile app, again, both for iOS and Android. Now, if you have the DC subscription, this will integrate directly into your DC account, bringing all the files that you opened and created with your um, desktop right inside of your uh, mobile device. You'll be able to see it now. And it's a great one, a uh, great tool for being able to manage and read these documents. Uh, you can do things like automatically adjusting the font size, uh, changing the, uh, the colors so that you can read it a little bit more. You can invert the colors, I believe. Uh, you can also use share and sign right from your mobile device as well. And this is a free app. And if you happen to have the DC subscription, once you log into your app, uh, it even unlocks more features and functions right away. And there's also the Adobe Acrobat for Chrome application. And this is a plugin for Chrome and Edge. I'll point out it works there as well. And it might be available for Firefox, but I didn't look. And uh, this is a tool that you can use to edit and manage PDFs right from your internet browser. Um, you open it up and it gives you a super set of features to manage these PDFs above and beyond what Chrome natively can do. I'll point out Chrome doesn't need a plugin to read a PDF. It can natively read a PDF. So what this tool will do is it will give you enhanced features uh, similar to what you would see in the Adobe Acrobat application that uh, you can then use to write inside of your internet browser to better manage uh, and consume this document. So you can do things like highlight, comment at the very minimum, all the way up to you know editing this document before you actually save it to your computer. Oh, I guess I did do some research. It's available for <laughs> Edge and uh, Firefox as well. Now, where do you get this? Well, you just can get it uh, directly from Google or you can get it from uh, Mozilla or Microsoft, depending what internet browser. Uh, you're using. So with that, why don't we go ahead and take a quick look at the application itself, and then we'll go ahead and have one final review question and then finish up for the day. Uh, but what I'd like to do is take a look at the Adobe tool itself and familiar, familiarize you with the um, features and functions that uh, you could expect to see inside of the application for Windows. And then when we come back in episode two, we will go ahead and dive deep into each of those features and functions and how they operate. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we're here inside of uh, Adobe Acrobat. I am just happened to be using the, uh, the Windows operating system. I will point out the Windows operating system and the Mac operating version of this are, are quite similar. All right, so, this is what the home view looks inside of Adobe Acrobat. On the left-hand side, you will uh, see the different areas where documents are being stored. And then up top here, you'll see some quick links to some different tools that you can operate with. I wanna point out the actual menu of this is quite simple. Uh, you'll see there's only a couple of menu items. And that's because maybe about 10 years ago, Adobe switched the layout of this application and put all of the things that used to be uh, you know, in menus up top here, they put into this tools menu in the uh, top header. And if you click over here to tools, you can see the actual features and functions of the Acrobat application. Okay. And then over here under the right, you can actually pin different uh, features and functions and you can collapse this if you don't need it. Uh, but this will show you all the different things that you can do. Now in episode two and three of this, we're going to dive into each of these different features showing you how some of the major capabilities of this application work. Um, and it's broken up into several work groups, you know, stuff around creating and editing documents, like creating these files, 
we'll walk through some different ways that we can create a single file, multiple files, scanning, clipboard, and more. And we'll also take a look at, for example, things such as editing these documents. So editing an actual file and what it looks like, for example, to modify and what you can expect to use with respect to the layout and format tools inside of Acrobat. Now down here, we've got our forms and signatures, our forms and signatures. This is going to be where we would see uh, the ability to be able to create forms like sign up forms for, you know, again, our kids ASO team or creating a form for onboarding a client and more. Uh, this gives us the ability to create a document that allows us to create repeatable, reusable forms that we can disseminate to whomever. And they can then use this PDF document to input information. And then we can bring that information back to us in the exact way that we want to receive it. And including now e-signature services, which are fantastic. This gives us the ability to be able to create something as a form and then actually send it out to somebody to be able to complete and send back to us with a legally binding signature, electronic signature associated with it. Down here, we've got our share and review. This is going to be where we can, you know, create a document and then send it out for comment or stamp it with a received or a completed stamp or share it with somebody. If it's a large PDF document that we need to send out to somebody and we wanted to be able to uh, share that link with somebody so that they don't have to necessarily um, download, sorry, they don't necessarily, let's say it's something that won't fit on a an email. Well, I can upload it to the DC, put the name of the people who I'm, I'd like to receive this particular document, and they will receive a link that they can then open in their internet browser and be able to either view that file or download that file. And then I can use this as a way to send bigger files that I wanna receive uh, that I can't normally send through email, or uh, also kind of put some automation in here. We're reminding people that I've sent them a file or I can even add a deadline uh, or even allow people to be able to comment. And, but it creates a little bit more structure than just straight up sending a file to somebody. Okay, and we can also um, protect our documents too. Uh, we'll talk about what this looks like. So if we had a document here and we wanted to protect it using a password or for example, restrict the ability for someone to be able to edit this particular document. Um, and I wanted to, for example, limit somebody's ability to be able to print this or change it or extract information from it. I can do so right inside of uh, here and I can limit those abilities now. Okay. And I'll show you how those work as well. But this tool, if you're somebody who is creating and, and managing information and you know, what accountant, what financial professional isn't on a regular basis, this has become, at least for me, an indispensable tool for creating documentation and editing documentation, securing documentation, uh, and more. Um, and you might think to yourself, well, hey, you know, I use QuickBooks and I can download PDFs from there, or I can use Word and I can save PDFs from there. That's only going to get you so far. You know, what this tool gives you the ability to be able to do is take it to the next level to ensure that the documents that you're creating and managing and sending are perfect. Um, and then above and beyond that, do things like e-signature, sending through the web securely and more. Uh, and so hopefully in these next two episodes, you'll gain an appreciation for this tool in the same way that I have over the years. So all that and more coming in episode two and three. Let's go ahead and have our final review question for the hour and wrap up. All righty. So. Our final review question for the hour, which version of Adobe Acrobat is going to offer the largest number of features and functions? Well, the correct answer here is going to be Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. That's definitely going to have the most features and functions related to it. Okay. The reader DC is still connected to the document cloud, but it's only for consuming information. Doesn't really have the ability to edit or modify. Standard will get you most of the features and functions in it, but it's going to lack the ability to compare files. It's also going to lack some of the redaction capabilities and some of the standardization capabilities. The Adobe Standard 2000, and sorry, that should actually say 2020. Um, well, I guess they did have an Adobe Standard 2000 as well. Uh, that feature is going to lack all of the DC capabilities, so the document cloud. It's just going to do whatever it did in 2020, and that's it. 
So the most correct answer here is Adobe Acrobat Pro DC uh, because it's going to contain all of the features and functions available in Acrobat plus all of the cloud features from the document cloud from Adobe. So today we discussed what PDFs are, how they their origin story, why they were created, the features and functions, benefits and advantages and limitations that come with respect to that file. And then we also took a look at Adobe Acrobat itself, discussing what this program is and how it's used and the different versions of this between the standard pro and reader, as well as between the perpetual license, which is the DC version, the document cloud version and the standard, uh, sorry, I, I shouldn't confuse that term and the subscription based uh, 2020 version, which doesn't include those features and why you might want to choose one or the other. Now, as a reminder, if you've gone this far, how about you get some CPE credits for watching or listening again, you can head on over to cpetoday.com. Our course code again is M A a one. You'll take a short five question quiz about what we discussed today, and then you'll earn a credit for your continuing education. Okay. And again, if you are a new listener or watcher, you can use coupon code one free podcast at checkout to make today's course credit 100% free to you. And if you're not a financial professional, you're just here to learn. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here. Now, what we'd really love is for you to connect with us. As a reminder, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel on YouTube to get our latest and greatest videos. And uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and more as CPE today. We're always putting out new videos, tech tips, and more to help you be the best professional you possibly can be. And if you can't attend our live presentations, remember, you can always find our show wherever you happen to find your content, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and more. It is always my pleasure to be with you and to present this material. Thank you so much for your time today. And I hope to see you for episode two and three back in the office soon. Thank you. Best wishes and good luck to you all.